Hello, I am Dr. Sridhar. Welcome to my channel. In case you have already subscribed, please support the channel by sharing the videos with your colleagues. And if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe and follow the notifications as well. Now moving on to a very important aspect which is humidification. So obviously uh, breathing cold air is not good and uh, normally our nose uh, has a very important function of adding heat and humidity. In a sick premature baby, their uh, ability to humidify appropriately is less, especially when we are giving cold gases at a higher flow rate. So we have a wall gas source where it's a cold gas and uh, only 2% humidity is taken up uh, when the wave passover mechanism happens, so it's not ideal. Uh, if it is a very slow flow rate, nothing comes up, you need a flow rate of 1 to 2 liters and if the water is at room temperature, it takes 2 to 6%. So that's not satisfactory and that's why in the tiny babies in the first few days, any flow that you use, use humidified high flow because most of the units have this anyway. Uh, humidified high flow nasal cannula ensures adequate humidification in any baby who needs more than 2 liters. So if a newborn baby has respiratory distress, you can assume that the baby needs uh, pressure. So start with high flow. If you need oxygen, you add that with the high flow. Don't start low flow oxygen alone in the initial stages when the baby is adapting. Uh, for two reasons. One is it's not heated and humidified. And second reason, you can't give any pressure with low flow. So these babies are invariably having stiff lungs due to TTN or delayed adaptation and giving the pressure helps them improve quicker. They don't need very high pressures unless the lung disease is significant. So a flow of 3 to 4 liters, if you are thinking of just giving oxygen, start with 3 to 4 liters flow and titrate the oxygen to the saturation. Uh, so this is the point I was making, go for high flow and if baby is worsening, go for CPAP. So this chart illustrates the uptake of humidity according to uh, the temperature. So when you heat up the gas, the uh, actual uh, water vapor content that a gas can carry increases so for the same uh, absolute uh, the humidity so the uh, milligrams of uh, uh, water can be taken is increasing the previous humidifiers allowed us to heat uh, up to 40 42 degrees at the humidifier level and that allowed a high water vapor to enter and uh, that used to have a risk of steam burns when it reaches the baby so Regulations were uh, changed and nowadays the humidifier cannot exceed 39 degrees at the humidifier level. So if it drops, the heater wire will heat it back up. So the amount of steam contained at any time is not going to exceed uh, what can be carried maximum safely uh, in the nose level at 37. So you aim for 33 to 44 milligrams percent. So the maximum that will reach is 44 milligrams, which is uh, not going to cause burns. At the same time, you maintain at least 33, which is recommended for the ventilated babies. Uh, the heated humidifiers with heated wire tubing circuitry have been the standard of care for many years. And by using the heater wire, you are maintaining that the water vapor content at the patient airway level as well as the temperature is maintained. Even if it drops on the way, the heater wire may heats up the gas and it maintains. Uh, we mentioned the safety regulation. Uh, at invasive settings, 37 degrees, uh, the water vapor content is 44 and in non-invasive settings, the water content is 18 to 32 milligrams per cent per liter. Uh, if there are rain out issues, you need to optimize the setting. The very uh, important consideration here is that the distal temperature probe should be outside the incubator or warmer. Uh, suppose it is, uh, this is the distal temperature probe and you need a long enough extension beyond that so that the patient can be connected and this can stay outside the incubator or warmer. If it is inside, then you have a higher chance of rain out. So this is the humidifier circuit, the humidifier itself, you have the invasive, uh, invasive and the non-invasive settings, you have the temperature probe, uh, proximal and distal, and the heater wire, the electric uh, connectivity to the heater wire comes from the probe as well. You have a dual heated circuits, you have just the inspiratory limb heated circuits and now we have uh, double wall circuits where the wire is built in into the wall of the incubator and that prevents condensation as well. Uh, airway humidification is a crucial component of respiratory care. We should ensure that the humidifier water levels are adequate and the temperature settings are appropriate as I discussed. In a very tiny baby, if you have appropriate circuit, you can use the invasive uh, mode for the non-invasive ventilation. It conserves the baby's own energy levels used mm -hmm. to humidify to a higher level. And uh, ensure that it is switched on. Sometimes we see that the high flow or the CPAP is switched on, 
without starting the humidifier and uh, make sure you use that as a first step because to use cold gas is not good for the baby and avoid using any form of respiratory support without humidified gases and that's the reason I suggested that you don't have a practice of starting nasal cannula low flow just go for high flow in the acute